Hey, how's it going? It's your boy, Coach T, coming at you with another great physics tutorial. Today I'm going to do 1985 M1, and let's get crack a lacking. Okay, part A. Calculate the total time from launch until the projectile hits the ground. Notice it's being fired off at 50 meters per second at an angle of 37 degrees above the horizontal. And this is a little bit different than most because you actually have a starting displacement. So this makes this problem a little bit trickier. So what I'll have to do is write down my variables. So delta Y is going to be negative 35. Gravity is negative 10 meters per second squared. It says the problem. I use negative 35 because the projectile will end up below where it started. So think of this as the zero, zero plane. Okay. Um, let's see here. The velocity initial oops, in the Y direction will just be um, 50 sine of 37 and they were nice enough to give it to me as 50 times 0 0.6 okay and that's going to give me 30 meters per second all right and we are looking for time so if we do this we notice the kinematic equation we can use is delta y equals v naught y times t plus g t squared all over 2 so that is the second kinematic equation. Plugging in our variables, you have negative 35 equals 30 times t minus 10 t squared all over 2. And then we can solve for 0. <coughs> so 35 is equal to 30t minus 5t squared. So 10 divided by 2 is 5. Notice um, they all are divisible by 5, so you have 7 plus 6t <coughs> minus t squared. And example, uh, you could either do the quadratic formula, negative, neg negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. You could even do the calculator trick. So you can plug this into your calculator. You can graph it, find out where it crosses the x-axis and get your time from that. Or, if you're lucky like this, this actually does factor, okay? Um, and our times for this are going to be 7 and negative 1, so you can factor this out. And obviously, when you fire this projectile, it's not going to go negative 1. It's not going to go back in time. So the proper time for A would be 7 seconds, unless firing this cannon created a time machine, which would be really cool, okay? That's for a later problem. So 7 seconds is our total time. B is calculate the horizontal distance, the range, as we like to call it. It travels before it hits the ground. Well, for B, we know our vertical velocity will equal 50 cosine of 37. And they went ahead and gave that to me uh, right here. Cosine of 37 is 0.8. So that is going to be 40 meters per second. Okay. And we know the acceleration in the x direction is zero because, um, let's see here, launch the ground, blah, blah, blah. And pre we're assuming this, yes, resistance is negligible. So there's nothing slowing it down. So therefore, it's going to be constant. And so you can actually use the same kinematic we used up here to derive this. It's going to be velocity initial in the x times t plus a t squared all over 2. And if this is zero, remember, if our friction is negligible, this part of the equation goes away. And it actually yields an equation that you probably have seen before, but you're not really sure how we got it. This is actually how. Delta x is equal to velocity initial in the x times time. So it's the same equation. That's actually how we derive that. So if we're looking for that displacement, we know that the velocity in the x direction is 40. The time is 7. So that gives us 280 meters. All right. Now C is calculate the speed of the projectile at points A, B, and C. Okay. Now this is going to be a little bit tricky. Okay. So this is C. So at point A, we come back to this drawing. The projectile is at its max height. Okay. So the velocity in the x direction will remain constant. So that means we have, was it 40 meters per second? And the velocity in the y direction will be zero meters per second. That means if we draw this vector out, we just get this. 
40 meters per second. So the projectile has a speed of 40 meters per second at position eight, remember. A is at the max height, so this is max height. B is when it's back in level, and then C is after it's falling and right before it hits the ground, we assume, okay? So this is ground level. So like our picture here, okay? Now, at point B, the velocity in the x direction for the projectile is still 40 meters per second. But the projectile is now exactly at the same vertical displacement that it was when it started. So, so actually that vertical displacement is zero at B. So interesting rule is if it goes up at 30 meters per second, and we're in a perfect world, it's going to be going down at the exact same opposite, so negative 30 meters per second. So for example, if it goes up at 30, it has to be coming down at 30 at the exact same vertical displacement. So we know our velocity in the x direction, sorry, and our y is going to be negative 30. So drawing out that vector gives us this. So we have 40 meters per second in the x, because our x direction velocity, I should say, will never change. Now we have negative 30. That's why this angle is going to be going down. If I want to know the speed, I will just take the hypotenuse of this. So negative 30 squared plus 40 squared equals, we'll call this V. Square root of that will equal the V at that. And what does that give us? Uh, 30 squared plus 40 squared squared. Yeah, that is 50 meters per second. And you can also deduce this too. If it goes up at 50 right here, kind of a nice little check right there that the speed at B will also be 50 meters per second. So again, that's a nice little check on that rule. Now C is a tricky one. So this will be at C. So the velocity in the x direction at C will still be 40 meters per second. And we're assuming this is right before it hits the ground. Now the question is, what is this velocity final right here? How fast is it going right before it hits the ground? Okay, so in order for us to do that, we can actually use kinematics. The velocity final in the y direction will be equal to the velocity initial in the y direction plus gravity times time. Now we know, this is the first kinematic actually, now we know um, how the initial velocity in the y direction, which is 30, and we know gravity is negative 10, and we know the object was in the air for seven seconds. So this will tell us exactly how fast in the y direction our projectile's going at seven seconds. So that is 30 minus 70 equals negative 40 meters per second. And that makes sense. The object is definitely going faster than negative 30, well, I should say. And then it's going down faster because it's had longer to fall. So now drawing this out, we get this. So you have an x direction of 40 and a negative 40 is our uh, in the y. So we can solve for this speed again the exact same way. So negative 40 squared plus 40 squared square root of that will give us b. So what is that? 40 squared plus squared, square root that answer, and you get right at, approximately call that 57 meters per second. So that is how fast the object is going at um, point C. Okay, notice it only asks for the speed and not the angle. If it asks for the velocity, you could use, um, you'd have to use trigonometry to find for these angles. So I hope this video helped. If so, give me a thumbs up and a like, and please subscribe for more juicy physics content. Thank you. Have a great day.